little bit here. Cool. All right. Well, I'm gonna. I'm Jeremy, and I'm gonna talk about this thing called Open Trails, and I'm just gonna skip right to it. Uh, luckily, I only need one slide. Um, so we're gonna spend the next 20 minutes diving into all 114 boxes here, um, and then maybe we'll get into the de technical details of Open Trails. Um, that sounds super fun, right? No. Okay. Let's not do that. Um, the technical details of standards and specs are awesome, and I love them, but what I've learned um, over the last year or two working on this thing called Open Trails with the OSM community is that um, standards and specs and data are actually really about people and people getting together to figure out um, how, to agree, how to agree on an approach to solve a problem that they're having, and standards really just formalize that. Um, so I want to tell a story about Open Trails and all the amazing people I've met along the way and how they've helped uh, move this thing forward. Um, and so I actually just want to start by getting to know you guys a little bit, um, you folks. Um, I'm curious, um, what are we doing with OSM? How many people here, raise your hand if you use OSM to like, find things to do in your parks and on your trails in your local area or when you're traveling? Cool. That's pretty good. How about um, do you map these things out? Do you ed do edits based on that? Awesome. Cool. Thank you. That's great. Um, how about, uh, is anybody building maps or applications on top of OSM data or with OSM data um, for getting people outside? Oh, awesome. Very cool. Okay. Uh, anybody doing that with a government or cities or? Cool. Great. C companies? Nonprofits? Wow, you guys, you guys are crushing it. Um, how about just for fun? Awesome. Cool. Everybody, right? Um, well, I, I'm Jeremy Monteau, and I'm, I'm here from Oakland, California, and this is my first, woo, Oakland. This is, yeah, go Golden State. Um, uh, this is my first, uh, my first time at State of the Map. Um, I like to find and map parks in OpenStreetMap, and I'm creating a platform um, for, for building better park maps and applications to ultimately get people outside. That's what, that's what I'm passionate about. Um, I do this with a company I started with a buddy called Trailhub Labs. Um, that's some of my contact information. I'm really, I, I'm honored and kind of blown away that um, I'm here. Um, I, I'm really, ex it's, you know, it's, it's become clear to me that OpenStreetMap has a vital role to play in something I'm really passionate about, which is getting people outside. So um, thank you for having me. It's, it's, it's great to be here. So um, I'm going to start telling a story from the beginning. Uh, I was born here. Um, maybe you don't recognize it yet. Um, it looks a little prettier in the spring. Um, Alaska is an amazing place with amazing people and great things to do outside. Uh, this is sort of my early, my early life. Uh, these are my parents. As you can tell, uh, we weren't oil tycoons, um, but we, the, my parents were homesteaders, and so we lived out uh, in the wilderness, and, and, and really um, my toys started to look like this, and uh, I spent a lot of time outside and, and just you know, developed a very deep connection to the outdoors very early and have carried that on throughout my life. Now, Something else kind of crazy happened early on in my life is my dad brought one of these crazy things home, uh, an early home computer, and uh, you could program BASIC, and the way you got software into these things was these little cartridges down at the bottom, and then uh, in magazines, it was kind of crazy. You'd get these listings of software. This is just how you got new programs if you didn't want to buy a new cartridge. Um, so I started doing that, and one thing led to another, um, and I end up building a career in technology and, and uh, a little bit in the outdoors, and so... 99, I, I come uh, uh, to the Bay Area, and at that time, um, you could start to like download software and, and get software from the web to a certain degree. And, and this is what, roughly what MapQuest looked like at that time. And, and actually, MapQuest had a sweet design in 99. Like, it was above and beyond everything else. And so it was clear that, that mapping uh, was going to be something that we did on the web, which was really exciting for me. So I started to poke around with different ideas about how I could build software um, for interacting with the outdoors more. So this is crazy. This is like a 14-year-old Java AWT piece of software that like, you can still download it and run it. It blows me away. But basically let me help figure out where I was running and how far I was running for before you could do this on the web. Um, you know, I worked for a, a long time doing enterprise software, not really getting to combine my passions um, for the outdoors and technology. So I, I, I took some time off and really committed to the outdoor lifestyle. Um, and, and did a lot of traveling. Um, but the night before one of my longer trips abroad um, and, and down south, I met this guy, uh, Ryan, and, and he was working at this interesting place called the Open Space Council 
And, and, and these folks are, it's a, it's a coalition of folks dedicated to um, getting people outside and protecting our, our public lands for recreation and conservation. Um, and this guy was their first director, and he had this idea of mapping out uh, in print all the transit lines and all the trails in the Bay Area, hopefully to get people outside using public transportation, um, get new kinds of people outside, get them outside in a new way. And so um, Ryan was working with, with, with these ladies, uh, Bettina and Annie. Bettina was the ED. And they said, hey, guys, like, you seem to be excited about this transit and trails idea. You, you kind of seem to know what you're doing on the web. You're excited about it. Just, just go for it. Like, we did, they, didn't, they didn't require a lot of uh, reporting in, uh, in the early days because we did it for free, so that made it easier. Um, so we built this thing um, called Transit and Trails, and um, it, it's done pretty well. Uh, it, it's getting people outside. Um, you know, a lot, for a lot of folks in the Bay Area, public transit is their primary mode of transportation. So, um, you know, this is getting people into the outdoors around them uh, much more easily and more often. Um, but this thing was kind of a pain to build. Um, you know, the data was all over the place. Uh, 55 different agencies just in the Bay Area had the data. And in, like, California, it's close to 1,000 different agencies manage all the lands and the data. So getting the data was crazy. The access was like it wasn't open data yet. So we had access to it through the council, which was probably the only reason we could have done this. No common format. It was all over the place. Uh, we had to normalize all of it down so we could even use it in a web environment. Um, and a lot of the data was just out of date. So and going and updating parks and trail data for you know, uh, the Bay Area at the whole is not something you can do easily. Um, one aspect of this that was easier was uh, the park boundaries because they were managed in a thing called the California uh, Protected Areas Database. And this gave us one place to go to get all the park boundaries and actually had the agency information in there. So the park boundaries themselves were way easier to do than any other aspect of this. So that's, that's sort of a hint uh, uh, to what's coming. Um, so th this thing became popular and the, the park agencies themselves, they want to have good websites and they want good data to be out in the world. So we started to provide these embeddable versions of what we were doing to the park agencies. Um, this is Santa Clara County using it on their website. And these things are, are getting better all the time. Um, Parks Conservancy, which manages the most popular national park land in the country, in the Bay Area, um, built this, this map using an API that we built. So starting to get towards the idea of like APIs and data. Um, versus just one-off consumer applications. Seth um, from Steeman and, and Kate and Alan did a really cool talk about the, all the Cardo CSS stuff they did to make this happen last year. Check that out. Um, and, and Ryan and I, you know, we, saw, we, we saw this need for this movement to data and APIs in the park world, like everywhere, everybody we talked to. So you know, we got excited about it and decided to scale this idea to start a company um, around it called Trailhead Labs. Um, and and at, I don't know, has anybody else here started a company, co-founder, anybody? Yeah, so early days, like these are the people that are making it happen, it's your family, like you gotta have your family behind you or, or whoever supports you, or it's just not gonna happen because it's hard. Um, so then something sort of like right after we started the company, something really fortuitous happened. We met this guy, Alan, and he was working um, at this organization called Code for America. There's probably a couple people here that know about it talk to them about. It's super cool. Alan had been working in Ohio on a really similar project to what we were doing here in the Bay Area. And, um, you know, he went through the sim similar struggles, like sort of collating data across agencies. You know, a lot of people don't realize in a given region, there's going to be 7, 8, 9, 10, 50, 100 agencies managing all those lands. Park visitor doesn't care. But you got you to figure out how to work with all them to get the data together. Um, and because there, you know, at that time, there was no single place to go. So Alan works with the local agencies, and, and sort of one of the things Code for America helps do is facilitate open data standards. So um, you know, Alan uh, and, and that crew um, decide to start an open data standard, and so um, or I think they call it an open data format. Sorry. Um, sometimes standards are sort of like they zoom out, and I don't know if you guys have seen this, seen this XKCD. It's great. Um, you know, they zoom out and try and do like more and like broaden broaden uh, an existing standard or standards, but sometimes they zoom in, right? They take an existing standard or technology and they like focus it on an area. Um, and that's really what Open Trails does. This, it sort of focuses, you know, a couple of existing standards on the domain of 
getting park information out to park visitors. Um, this is just an example of, of what it looks like. I'm not going to dive into that too much. So I just want you to see a couple of statements from the Open Trail System specification um, that really it was Alan and, and the, 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 those folks that they really thought about this early on and said, hey, the, the primary use case, let's focus the use case to you know, open trails is uh, for provisioning of officially sanctioned information from many agencies to a common or overlapping audience uh, of the visiting public, right? So super focused, it's not gonna do everything, right? There's a lot of data about parks out there. Um, this this ne next part is, is cool. Um, to promote further use of the data, open trails is crafted with use by a number of related specifications and applications in mind, including o OpenStreetMap specifically. Um, I, th I think this was, was really wise of Alan um, and, and others in the beginning. Um, so, so they looked at all the existing trail data standards because you know, this has been done before and to various degrees of success. And, and there's the federal trail data standard, which I'll, I'll come back to. Um, there's a couple others. You know, there's a lot of data out in the world in ESRI uh, shape files. You know, nine times out of 10, we go to a park agency, they've got an ESRI database. Um, and OSM, you know, it, was, it, was, it had become clear that there's a bunch of awesome data in OSM about parks and trails and, and it needed to be brought to the table because that, that was gonna be a way to move this forward. Um, so specifically with OpenStreetMap, um, there are a number of considerations made in, in early on and sort of discussed. And, and you know, there was some high level field mapping, so just making sure it was gonna be easy to like go back and forth between open trails and OpenStreetMap. There was like an OSM tags field that just kind of gave um, arbitrary um, storage to like OpenStreetMap tags for people that were already working with the tags or wanted to. And then the primary extension mechanism for open trails is actually a collection of um, tags, of, of sort of commonly used tags for different domains if you want to apply open trails to like wintertime areas um, or, or other specific uses of trails. So um, they followed a, a very deliberate process, a community-driven process for open trails, and, and they, they sort of like brought all the right people to the table. It was like park people, governments, um, private companies that were already working in the space, um, all, all kinds of different folks, and, and they participated in a request for comment period. Um, it, you know, hats off to, to, to Alan and others for facilitating that. And so we ended up um, uh, la sort of launching the, the initial version of open trails um, 1.0, and, and very early on, um, by working with people that were actually going to use the data standard, we, we, we realized there was a little tweak that needed to be that was actually really important. So very quickly, we went to 1.1, um, but then froze it. And, and, and so then we needed to start talking to the world about open trails, and that included at the, the CFA summit, Code for America summit. Um, we also ran uh, these training courses to engage with um, the parks community and sort of getting them familiar with the standard. You, some of you might recognize um, this awesome person, Lizzie Diamond. Um, one of the groups that went through the training course was sort of like the region of Boulder. They had their county, they had their city uh, managers in this course learning about open trails. They have since adopted it and are building an application with their local sort of volunteer uh, brigade. Um, that was up for an award already, which is crazy. It's, I mean, open trails has only been around for a year um, so it's amazing what has happened. So, so what even is Open Trails? Um, it's it's pretty simple and uh, deliberately so. It's really you know there's a couple CSV files, a couple GeoJSON files, um, and, and sort of hints of OSM in there. Like I said earlier, um, stewards is really about who manages these this stuff and where do you get more information. Trail segments is the actual trail alignments and the attribution of what can I do there. Um, uh, Name trails is basically the what are the names of the trails that go over these segments. It's kind of similar to the way Relations is getting used um, to do this in OSM. Trailheads, points, where do you actually get onto the trails, critical. Um, and areas is an optional sort of park boundary. So, and we can talk more about that at length uh, outside the talk. So, you know, one of the things we do is, is, is try and go uh, to the agencies to, and the community to, to sort of build things around open trails. So, um, we, we went up to Portland and built this, this cool thing to just make it really easy for citizens to contribute data uh, into the Open Trails data format. So we built this thing called Trail Editor. They can take a picture, email it in, gives them a trailhead with the photo, the location, um, and uh, a couple of other pieces of information they can edit. Cool thing about working on trails is you actually get to go out on trails and test this stuff. So 
following weekend, they went out and did that in Portland. Since then, Portland has also adopted the standard um, uh, 1,700 miles of trails, amazing area for, for that stuff, 180, 90 um, organizations. And, you know, startups are easy. So all we did was we went and talked to all the people, and we built all the things, and then we, we're still working on the profit part. Um, but along the way, we've met some really awesome folks. Um, Martin um, and, and this guy, Chris Gorenson, who's an innovation fellow at the, the White House, uh, at uh, Department of Interior, they were organizing these two events that actually happened to be on the same weekend. So, and, and, and we really wanted to support both of them. So we took this trail editor concept, which was getting traction, um, and we added some integration. Uh, well, first we wrote a blog post and talked about it and told people about it. Um, so they'd know about it for the, the events. And then we, we actually did the integration um, because Trail Editor stands everything up as open trails. We were able to integrate it with a, a platform we build and then allow people to connect their OSM accounts and publish trailheads very easily uh, over to their OSM accounts. Uh, very simple. And that carries with it all the right tags. And tags are sort of a moving target, but we're, we're figuring it out thanks to some books like Brandon um, and others in the community. Um, but Open Trails was designed for this, so it was, it was pretty easy um, to do that integration. Uh, we go to DC, and uh, the DC OSM community comes out. They do some in the field mapping, taking advantage of some of these, um, some of the technologies and the tools. Um, that was awesome. And this was at the DOI, at the part of the interior, in their um, sort of, H they have a basement atrium, which, figure out how that's possible. Um, uh, and, and this was primarily the, the agencies, the federal agencies that manage our land were there. Um, so we teamed up with a group we'd worked with before, Stamen Design, awesome. Um, and we, we addressed a, a challenge that they, we had been hearing around social trails and unmanaged trails. Um, so there's some challenges there. And we came up with some solutions um, to, one, allow citizens to, con to sort of contribute um, data about where these things are happening, but also help the agencies um, and the community sort of resolve differences between the data. Um, so we added some, um, some code to Trail Editor to let people submit social trails, as they're called. And then we did, um, Seth from Stamen built this really cool JOSM integration that was compositing tiles to show where agency data, um, OSM data, and then Strava heat map data were sort of either in alignment or out of alignment. Um, and and this, you know, we demoed this, and this sort of caught the attention of, uh, there were like 10 demos, and we were the only ones that did anything sort of data geeky-ish. Everything else was apps and games. Um, it, there's this thing going on in government right now, and, and Mikkel, who's talking right now, uh, uh, I can't wait for that video, he, uh, he said it in, a, in an article, you know, for government, OpenStreetMap is more than just excellent data, it's a transformation. And, you know, this is catching on the other agencies, like these, these departments and agencies manage like a quarter of all the landmass in the United States is sort of public lands. These guys manage it um, for the public and with the public. Forest Service alone, 157,000 miles of trail. It's the largest known trail system in the world. Um, crazy. They're really getting ahead of the game on data standards and working with, with sort of community data, including OSM and everything going on in social media. So. They got, they got pretty excited and they asked us to come back out um, to DC actually on Monday um, to talk to, to talk in front of a group like this for agencies um, to understand like sort of what's going on, what's possible. So that was super exciting. Um, you, know, the thing that, you know, we were in some, some meetings with all the agencies and these are the kinds of things that were being said. Like, you know, in five years we're gonna look back and wonder why they're, like, we weren't doing this from the beginning. Like interacting with the community, using community data, contributing to community data with authoritative agency data. So, so here we are. Um, you know, I, I, I grabbed a train from DC uh, up here yesterday and, and, and it's amazing to be here and thank you for coming. And so there's a bunch of stuff we can do now. Um, you know, there's crosswalks, there's improving the spec and, and there's a lot of ways for you to do that. So let's do a birds of a feather. Let's participate in the request for comment, which is now open. Um, and let's start telling everybody about this. Because uh, it's happening. Last thing is, uh, you know, this guy Nate Goldman from Esri R&D said this thing at the original sort of unveiling of Open Trails. I think at Cal GIS, GIS he said, "Standard is only as good as its community," and and like, it just put it so well. And thank you for um, letting me sort of be a part of this community and and being so open um, and, and just helpful in this whole process. It's really been been amazing. And um, it's National Trails Day. 
So happy National Trails Day, and thank you very much. Uh, I, I think I can take a couple questions. Um, I got like five minutes for questions. In New York City area, Manhattan, Bronx, Dead Island, Brooklyn, Queen, so many parks, we create more than uh, an intro park, like Central Park, Brian Mark, Court Island Park, and Queen Park. Cool. A lot of steel coating. Uh, uh, you create a lot of data collection in SQL, how to create your mapping system. Open tweet map with the architect on it. Cool. So a lot of transit, transit and trails sort of related activity. Would love to chat more about what you're doing and how we can help. There's a lot of a lot of cool stuff going on there right now. A lot of excitement around transit and trails, and uh, we we you know we're actively moving that project forward. And uh, there's some cool stuff happening there, especially like all the like the routing stuff that's happening right now, and bringing that all. In, I mean, amazing. Thanks. We can talk. We can talk more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Uh, could you explain a little bit more about like exporting from Open Trails uh, to OpenStreetMap? Like, is that a manual, like, one-off process? Is there like an automated process that runs occasionally? And how is the licensing handled? Yeah, great question. So, so sort of going from Open Trails into OSM, there's no one way. We're sort of like finding ways, um, the way we're doing it now. So, so one thing to keep in mind is for a lot of agencies, their data has to be public domain. Um, so if like, they're going to put any staff or time or money on it, it has to be public domain. So Open Trails kind of creates this holding area because it's just a file that they can drop on a server. And somebody else can figure out how to get it into other places, including OSM, right? So we're kind of like helping them or like just showing examples. So we just did an, an, an OAuth in, right? So you can just, if you're looking at, you know, a trailhead, just sort of publish it over and like make edits that way. And then you can edit it using tools. But like really there's no, I wouldn't think about it like pushing in. I would think about it like there's open trails data out there. How do we figure out ways to go from open trails into OSM and other systems in the best way that makes sense for those different communities, right? That's part of it is like, working with the different communities on what works for that community. It's not going there and prescribing something. So that's what we're trying to do, and would love your help on that. But is Open Trails purely like a standard, or is there also like a central repository? So it's a great question. It is a, it's a data standard. There is no central repository. So kind of like GTFS, if you're familiar with that, what happened in public transportation. There's no, there is no single repository. Um, but like my company is, I don't want to advertise, but we're working on that. Like that's what we do for the park agencies. We think there's a lot of value in that. Um, and having things like open trails around really helps with that. So looks like uh, that's all. I would love to chat with all of you more. We're going to do a, a birds of a feather. Let's get together. Thanks again.